Hello and good morning students. So, so let us start today's lecture. So today we will learn something called uh, the Chinese Inventor Theorem. The Chinese theorem okay the general version we will learn and this is one of the very most uh, important theorems in reading theory and also you can apply in other parts of mathematics in number theory and other places so um so so let me just give you some kind of background so this is uh, so so the, the natural question is the why this name chinese in the theorem right so the, this was first appeared in a book of a Chinese mathematician, I think around second um, century, third century. Okay, see that uh, common era. And uh, so the question was that, uh, like, like uh, to solve these uh, linear congruences. For example, if you want to solve like uh, something, say zero mod modulo three. Uh, and uh, this, I mean, something just common solution, or maybe say uh, one mod four. Okay, so do you have a common solution of these two equations? So what does that mean? The first equation tells you that something which is divisible by three. Second equation tells you that um, something which you when you divide by four, you have one one as a remainder. See? Remainder there, right? The one is a remainder. Okay, do you have such common solutions? Or if you can add uh, more in this list, you, uh, suddenly you can add, uh, say, for example, um, say four. I'm, I'm just uh, adding randomly, say, okay, mod five, and so on. Okay, so can you, can you do anything like that? Or do you have what are the conditions that we will learn? Okay. So the answer is that yeah, so you can have solutions. You can you actually can have sometimes infinitely many solutions. Okay, for example, here x equal to nine is a common solution. Common solution, right? To this linear congruence, you see that nine is common to zero mod three, nine is common to one mod four, nine is common to four mod five. Okay. So, uh, so in general, uh, uh, how do you write in, write it down? I will tell you in integer cases. But in in theory, you have the general version. I will describe the general version first, and then you will have all those uh, corollary. Everything will come as special case. Okay. Now, um, uh, to learn the general version, so let me. Um, uh, start with some definition so um, like whatever I need so suppose I have say rings say R1 and R2 and then I can define something called direct product of rings okay so what is this this is this order pair R1 R2 okay order pair of rings or um, yeah maybe not R1, R2, R and S I should write down, then that will be better. So this is say R and S. No, I think R1, yeah, so R and S. R1, R2 is okay, no problem, yeah. No problem, yeah. I can write down S1 for other one. So R1, R2, such that R1 belongs to capital R1. And R2 belongs to capital R2. And uh, what are the operations? So we have we define operations plus and dot. So how do the operation define plus? So R1, R2 plus some say S1, S2. This component wise R1 plus S1, R2 plus S2. Okay. And similarly, the dot is also component wise. So, what does that mean? That means so you have R1, R2, and say S1, S2, and then dot is nothing but R1. This is uh, 
for rocking side the ring around this one okay similarly r to s2 now you check with these two operation that uh, this forms a ring and this uh, this is called the direct product of okay so uh, direct product of r1 r2 okay so um uh, so um so so this is the right product of rings and we need you know, one more definition let me write down so uh, uh, say so let r be a ring okay and uh, okay so this uh, so two ideals um, I1 and I2 are called co maximal ideal, co maximal ideals. Um, so, so you understood the meaning of co maximal ideals. So, ideals uh, of R if what happen if this sum of the ideal remember uh, the way i define the sum of the ideals and that has to be equal to the full r then we call this uh, um, they, they are called co maximal to each other okay co maximal ideals so uh, so for example um, um, you can have say in ring of integers uh, for example you take ideal generated by so so your r equal to say z and you take b is plus five say example and you see that this is nothing but there itself okay in fact if you take three plus four this is also zero itself the ideal generated by three and four right and why so because um, because uh, three five are co, uh, co prime similarly three four are co prime right so in, in general if if m and n are co prime then ideal generated by m plus ideal generated by n equal to the full integer how do you prove it so co prime did you remember the basic lemma tells you that you have integer k1 m plus k2 uh, n that is equal to one right so what does that mean that means the left hand side is this is inside this this is inside this so one is inside this so one belongs to um this plus this okay now once one belongs to an ideal then full ring belongs to the ideal right so this is a subset of this done the other part is obvious obvious so these two are equal right so so this property are called co maximal property now i'm going to uh, describe you this chinese elementary theorem for uh, general rings and then you will have the special case but uh, before i go into the general version i will um, start with a toy version so toy version of General is called Chinese Remainder Theorem CRT. Okay. Okay. So what what is the toy version? Suppose I have this ring. So let R be a ring, and um, you have I one, I two. Uh, co maximal ideals of R okay then what happened then uh, you, you know this product of ideal right that we already defined before then R mod this product of ideals I1 I2 this is this is this is also a form setting right quotient ring and this quotient is isomorphic to 
r mod i1 direct product of r mod r2 now try to understand that uh, uh, the, the structure of this is known to me this is also known to me and direct product i know so i can find out the structure of this okay this uh, not these things okay so if i have a solution of this a solution of this then i have a solution of common solution of this so that will be right something is solution of this means what zero modulo i1 zero modulo i2 and you see that because these are, they are they are isomorphic as a ring so the, the so they have a solution of zero modulo i1 i2 so, so this is actually uh, what i was discussing in the first page okay the solution common solution of the equations okay now how do you prove this kind of uh, statement so let me give a proper proof and then i will tell you the general version this is true for any finally many ideals with pairwise co-prime property so um sorry co-maximal co property proof so um so what i do so i will define a map phi from r to r mod i1 direct product of r mod i2 okay and what will the natural map so the natural map will be phi of r then maps to here um, so i can write down r bar r bar so r bar r bar so what is r bar r bar is nothing but r plus i1 here inside uh, this inside this it is r plus r i2 so i see whether I, maybe this is better to write down okay because you may have a confusion here okay so let me write down by this okay so this is the natural map right so uh, so this, this map you will define natural map so you have no problem you can ask uh, what about the kernel of this map and this is also ring homomorphism now note that note that phi is a, a define ring homomorphism okay so you check it uh, this is homework there's nothing to prove it actually okay ring homomorphism uh, and um, hmm, uh, so uh, what is the interesting part the interesting part or if you don't okay i don't know so we can prove it or not you just have to use the property of this direct product of rings okay uh, okay so I, I okay so if you cannot prove this thing then i will discuss this uh, on the next uh, coming this tutorial class or what is that live season class okay so you can easily prove it i guess so so this is ring home problem uh, and uh, and i i want to know whether the this is what is the kernel first okay so let me find out what is the kernel so um, what about this kernel of phi so kernel phi by definition uh, it's uh, all those r belongs to r okay such that the image of r that is zero so what is zero here zero is means uh, zero inside this uh, direct product right so that is a coming from individual zero of these rings and these rings right so what will be that thing so that is zero ideal right so uh, sorry zero plus i1 uh, i let me write down by this and then i so this is actually ideal i1 point right okay so so what does that mean see you collect all the r belongs to r and then um, write down phi r which is nothing but this uh, phi r is what phi r is equal to r plus i1 and uh, so r plus r2 and that has to be 0 i1 i2 right we don't need this part uh, we don't need this part so just this is nothing but this okay and uh, so 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 when this order pair equal means what that means that individual each uh, um, uh, coordinates they are equal right so r i1 equal to i1 so what does that mean that means your um, 
R belongs to I1 and from this you get that R belongs to I2 also right and what does that mean that means uh, if you collect all the elements where R belongs to I1 intersection I2 yeah I1 intersection I2 Yes, so so what does that mean? That means this kernel, um, every element of the kernel is actually a subset of the I1 intersection. Uh, right. Conversely, also true. Conversely, conversely, I1 intersection I2 is also inside the kernel. This is obvious because. If something is I1 intersection I2, that will be 0 inside uh, R mod here. If, if you choose something in R1, I1 intersection I2, then that will be 0 here also, here also, right? So this is in the kernel. So obviously, so what does that mean? That means the kernel of this homomorphism you know, is nothing but I1 intersection I2, right? Clear. So this much I think is clear so far. So um, now you can use uh, now uh, now uh, by fast by the fast um, isomorphism morphism theorems of rings. We have what we have. We have that this um, R mod I1 intersection I2. This is actually isomorphic to the image of uh, right. Okay, so this is okay, right? But but you see, this is not our goal. Our my goal is to prove that this is this this product ideal, not the intersection ideal, right? And also uh, this phi bar has to be the full thing, right? So what I need to prove, I need to prove two things. One, this phi is an onto map. And another thing is that uh, this intersection equal to nothing but the product, okay? Now, uh, now uh, two things we will prove one by one. Um, and here we need this property. That property I just described here, co-maximal ideals, okay? So this co-maximality is very important and that going to play a role here, okay? Um, um, I should say one more thing beginning, I, otherwise it will be not, yeah, so when I am saying a ring, I am assuming that, um, okay, so I should say that this is commutative inutile ring, yes. This is my assumption, otherwise it is not true actually, this version, counted to the ring, okay. So, um, yes, so uh, now come to the point where, uh, so, so claim, so under the condition of co-maximality, yeah, this I1 and I2 is actually equal to the I1 intersection I2, this first claim. Okay, now how to prove this thing? You need a proof. You need to give a proof for every claim. And proof is simple. You just have to uh, check uh, one by one. So now, so which part is obvious? You tell me. Um, uh, one, this is obvious, right? So I1 intersection I2 is always subset of I1 intersection I2, right? Because uh, if you choose any element, so this will be sum of finite product uh, finite sum of product of element y1 r2 right and each of those things is inside i1 r2 so this part is obvious the converse part you need to find out okay conversely so uh, so um, um so uh, so let uh, something say c some element a belongs to uh, it belongs to say I1 intersection I2, suppose. Okay, and I need to show that uh, for each such A, that is also element of I1 intersection I2. Now, how do you show that? Now, you should now um, co maximality, co 
maximality of i1 and i2 implies what does it implies it implies that there, there exists some elements x y uh, so i should write down can we let me write down properly here so x belongs to say i1 and y belongs to i2 such that this x plus y equal to 1 right because uh, they are co-maximal right and they, they, they the sum is i1 plus i2 equal to uh, full r and you know that r contains 1 so for 1 you have something right you can write down this thing right and what does that mean that means if you multiply by this element a which is a some arbitrary element of the intersection then a can be written as a x plus a y right isn't it yes and now you see this is this is an element of i1 intersection i2 right product finite sums of the product of the element right so what does that mean that means i1 intersection i2 is a subset of i1 i2 okay and thus they are same in this case they are equal for the case when they are co-maximal ideals right okay so so this part is okay obviously yeah, i think you can find out you understood it now for the next part um for next part uh, uh, another claim so i need to prove that uh, this phi is uh, subjective so on to map right so how do prove phi is subjective again i need to use the co-maximality uh, so co-maximality tells me what that tells me that uh, there exists as i told you uh, x belongs to i1 y belongs to i2 such that uh, this x plus y equal to 1 right and um, uh, so what does that mean that means what is the image of x so the image of x will be uh, nothing but you say that x plus i1 and x plus i2 right by definition of phi but x plus i1 is what x plus i1 equal to i1 right so this is actually zero element this one is zero element so this is zero you can say zero bar or whatever okay but if, what is x plus i2 x plus i2 equal to you can write down uh, x is 1 minus y plus i2 right but again y is element of i2 so that absorb inside i2 so you'll have 1 plus i2 which is nothing but 1 element so you can write down 0 bar and 1 bar right is it okay so the image of x y is nothing but 0 bar 1 bar okay now same thing uh, what is uh, the image of y and now you check that it is exactly the similarly you can find out this is 1 bar 0 bar okay so these two element uh, x and y are very special element they have a very special element right now um, now done so this is the interesting part we, we need now if you find out um, um, see when i'm saying this is one bar this is modulo r i2 this is zero bar modulo i1 okay so so don't confuse it okay now uh, now for any arbitrary element element of say uh, this the direct product you choose say r1 plus or maybe like let me write down okay whatever it does, doesn't matter okay now you see that so this is actually uh, r1 r1 bar and r2 bar right now r1 r2 bar what you can write down r1 r2 bar you have a very nice uh, you can write down uh, this is uh, nice way right so this is you can write down as r1 time you see that the um, uh, first one is um, 
okay so let me find out x equal to 0 into 1 right so so you multiply by r1 into uh, 0 so that will get cancelled so r2 so r2 times uh, uh, not r2 but uh, r2 times your x plus uh, r1 times y right isn't it this is okay because this is c this is r2 into uh, 0 bar 1 bar plus r1 into 1 bar 0 right now if you if you just take the product you will have r bar right done so this, this is this is actually any element of this direct product r1 more i1 direct product r2 r1 more r2 can be written as this linear combination of these elements that x and y right now um this combination of these elements so uh, so what does that mean that means if you want to find out the if you want to know what is the um, uh, pre image of uh, this element uh, now that will be this actually so why so now see that phi of uh, this r2x plus r1y and now if we apply uh, this homophone property this will be phi of r2x plus phi of r1y okay and then um, then you see that uh, uh, so this is phi of r2 and then phi of uh, x similarly um, okay 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 no no i think uh, there is a mistake uh, this is not equal to this yeah so no no this is i am going to write it down okay I am going to write it down this in terms of this. This is not equal to this, yeah. Yes, so this is the type. Okay. So R1 equal to R2, and then we will consider these elements. Um, consider consider the element R2x plus R1y in r see this is an r actually image of x is actually 0 bar 1 bar x is not 0 bar 1 bar right yeah so image so yeah so this is phi of r1 and phi of y right now image of r2 is what so image of r2 um, is nothing but uh, uh, r2 plus i1 and then r2 um, r2 plus i2 okay and then you multiply by this what is the image of this this is 0 bar 0 bar means uh, uh, 0 plus i1 and then 1 bar which is 1 plus i2 plus uh, some part this part what is the other part other part is what um, that plus continue plus uh, image of i1 so r1 plus i1 and r1 plus i2 into uh, this part phi of y phi of y we already know this is what phi of y is nothing but this one bar zero bar right now if you uh, do this product now if you take the product you see that the first one vanishes the second one is served by there right so this is zero uh, zero bar and r2 bar and here the opposite r1 bar 0 bar and hence you have r1 bar r2 bar if you take the sum okay you see so so what does that mean that means if you take these elements which is r1 bar 2 bar the pre image is nothing but this this is the pre image and that shows that uh, thus thus phi is on to Okay, yeah, sound map. So, so now obviously you have two the pro both the properties on to ness and then the product ideal is also the intersection of two ideals. So, thus you can say that uh, this R mod I1 I2, which is actually in this case is isomorphic to 
R mod I1 plus R mod I2. Okay. That is the proof for this baby version or toy version. Now in general what happens? So um, so general version. So uh, the Chinese even the theorem. Okay, so let R be a commutative unital ring and say I one, I two, E two, something say I n be pairwise co maximal. Pairwise co maximal means uh, each other, if you choose any two of them, they are co maximal. Okay, co maximal ideals. Okay. Then what happened? Then Chinese general theorem tells you that you we have a common solution with this ideal. So this is if you take this product I n and this is isomorphic to as a ring R1 mod I1 be the product of R1 R mod I2 and so on. R mod I okay so this is the product of this okay so 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 obviously uh, you know that the version uh, the toy version how to prove it now this is just induction on in you can easily prove that now induction on is nothing so so proof we use mathematical induction induction uh, on the number in okay okay so now now obviously for 2 n equal to 2 this is n equal to 2 done right now uh, we assume that uh, assume assume that um, it is true for uh, uh, n minus one. Okay, and you write you write down now for n case. So let you have now uh, uh, these new ideals. So a equal to say i one and b equal to uh, this this um, you can write down b is the product of that ideal. So um i2 i3 and product i n okay now now you know that for for b it is true right you know that uh, in that sun hypothesis tells you that r mod b that is a direct product of the individuals quotient right now if you have this in many things then what happened then for two you know that uh, r mod um, a into b the isomorphic to r mod a direct product r mod b provided provided what what more you need you need that a plus b has to be co maximal and this map is phi right the, the, the original map original map you know already yeah so so and i mean original map is phi is obvious so uh, sorry original map is uh, on to is obvious it's that way same way we prove it right now co maximality is something that you need to check properly whether if we take this n minus one many thing together that will be still co maximal with the one element that is the interesting part okay 
that you need to check. Now once you need you have checked this thing, then the theorem is just uh, one line, right? Now, uh, now, uh, so you need to so we, our claim is that this uh, a plus b is also r. This is the claim co maximum, right? So a is the ideal i one and uh, b is the product of this i two to i n. They are co, co pairwise co maximum, right? So what does that mean? So see a1 so i1 is co maximal with all like with all i2 i3 and so on i n right so what does that mean that means co maximal of i1 i2 will give you that something say um, whatever so so let me write down that xi plus yi um, equal to 1 uh, there exists this x such that x i is always element of i1 and y i is are element of uh, i i s or i can say y x j y j that is better other than too many i's y j is element of i j s that means what that means uh, if, uh, because i1 and i2 are co maximal so we will have element uh, x2 plus y2 equal to 1 similarly i1 and i3 are co maximal so we will have x3 y3 sum will be 1 like this right this, this will be 1 and now if you want to take the product now if you take the product of 1 then what will happen then 1 will be equal to x2 plus x3 and sorry x2 plus y2 x3 plus y3 and so on last one will be xn plus yn right i am just taking product with all those xj's so j is running over 2 3 n okay now if you take product of those things then what happened then uh, this happened now you know that x xj's x2 x3 xn these are all element of i1 right so if you take the product then again something will be x1 x2 sorry uh, dot, 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 xn and see sorry x2 x3 xn and this is an element of i1 and plus rest so what is the rest thing now rest thing you see in the rest thing you you are actually taking product with respect to uh, this, um, this this product right so rest something which is an element of a2 a sorry i2 i3 in whatever you take product x2 with uh, uh, y3 or some some any product so that will be again an element of this okay so uh, rest are element of uh, this product uh, this inside rest are inside this uh, i2 i3 and this product i n okay so what does that mean that means this first one element element of a the second one is element of b actually okay so 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 one is element of other i should say this belongs to not equal to this belongs to so one is element of a plus b and that is the thing we need to prove so a plus b equal to the full being r and then it's co maximum right so done so then what happened then you can use that the fact that uh, r mod a b is nothing but r mod a r mod b right now a b is what so a b they are co-maximal so and for co-maximal ideals you know that the product the intersection equal to product so that is nothing but um, i1 i2 i n right and this is nothing but r mod i1 but this is see there are n minus one main elements so again you use um, the standard element of theorem that is we, we assume right this is nothing but an induction we have as assumption so by the assumption induction hypothesis you will have this is i2 and then i n so this is the proof actually so so everything you can you can just plug it in Okay, so uh, so this is a full version of Chandrasekhar the theorem, and then obviously the special case um, note. 
special case when in and in are co prime, you can write down and say z mod m n z, nothing but z mod m z plus c for finite finite uh, things direct product direct sum of same so but let me write down direct product here because i'm i'm thinking as a ring so on z mod n z right this is because i know that when mn are co prime then they they form a co maximum ideal right so they are co maximum ideals and then you will have this thing right uh, um, now um now obviously the another corollary is the uh, so you can step forward have a corollary of this theorem uh, so uh, corollary so if you take the units of these things what are the units of this thing units mean invertible elements and you see the invertible elements f also forms a group and then you know this is we write down by this notion right and this is actually um, z mod z plus z mod z. Okay, so uh, and then obviously uh, in general, if you write down uh, say corollary two, in general, if you write down n equal to say p one alpha one some p k alpha k, then you have in mod see these p i s p1 p2 they are uh, distinct primes so you can write down this as uh, this um, isomorphic to when i'm saying equal i mean isomorphic to z mod u1 alpha 1 right and so on now you recall this was one part of this fundamental theorem of uh, finite abelian group if you remember One of the part of this thing right okay and again uh, so this implies the units are uh, also having this property so this will be z mod even alpha one z star like that cross and z mod pk alpha k z and then cross right so so uh, so so uh, so what does that mean? That means the corollary. You remember the Euler to same function phi. So the Euler to CN function. Uh, yeah. So so this is classical phi. This is not the phi I'm using in the in the proof of the theorem. So the phi counts that phi n is number of integers which are co prime to n and less than equal to n and then you see this is exactly this and this is nothing but this is a proof a direct proof that uh, this phi 1 phi 2 and so on phi of p power k k which tells that phi is multiplicative functions okay so, uh, so maybe this is uh, uh, end of standard theorem. You will have lots of application in tutorial, but I will end this talk uh, by mentioning one more small thing. I should mention that, and that is called field of fractions. Okay, so what is that? So uh, let uh, R be an integral domain domain uh, and then the smallest field containing R is called the field of fractions or a quotient field whatever quotient 
field of R. Okay. So, so I am saying continue. I mean that R is sitting in say as a copy. There is a copy of R inside the that field. Okay. So this kind of call embedding. Okay. So for example, um, for example. If you take uh, that uh, ring of integers, which is integral domain, right? You see that the smallest field where it's sitting is nothing but the rational number Q, right? This is the smallest field. Okay. And uh, similarly, if you if you start with say, um, say, say, say polynomial, say polynomial ring. Okay, and now find out uh, this is there something called rational functions, field of rational functions. So, um, so how do I write down this is this is this is this is straight bracket and this is round bracket, field of rational functions over integers. Okay, like this, and um, yeah. So these are the example, and then how to construct this thing? The construction I already described. I remember, but let me again tell you the construction. I describe how to construct Q from Z once. So let me write down again. So you write down S is Z cross Z star. So 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 Z minus zero. So what is that? Like you write down Z star or Z something. And on the on on this uh, seat you you have the natural uh, natural ordering right and then with respect to the natural ordering no no you define to uh, say um, equivalent relation so you take a1 b1 uh, a1 a2 you say a1 a2 is related to b1 b2 if only um, a1 b2 equal to a2 b1 okay and this tilde you can check is an equivalent relation i think this is i only prove it before some some like classes if we balance class equivalent relation this is equivalent relation and then you can talk about the equivalent classes Okay, so equivalent relation of uh, this um, relation of this order pair a1 a2. I will write down this by this symbol a1 by a2. Okay, and uh, with respect to this uh, notion, I can define addition and multiplication by this. So a2 plus b1 by b2 equal to what is the addition? a1 b2 plus b1 a2 divided by a2 b2 and what is the product product is a1 by a2 into b1 by b2 and this is nothing but uh, a1 b1 a2 b2 okay i hope now you remember uh, this thing now with respect to this this forms a field actually you can find out that this forms a field uh, integral because of his integral one property gives you that all the non zero elements will convert like in the, they will uh, inverse here okay become invertible okay so so this is the method you, you generate if you generate q from uh, these integers yeah so by this i will stop and um, uh, from tomorrow or, or next day, we will learn something on the many more new structures. Okay, so this is the end of my lecture. Thanks.